So let's get started. I'm gonna create a new data set. I can upload a GeoJSON file if I have one all created, already created, but I'm gonna create a blank one. So we'll call this. I suspect there won't be any surprises as to what I am going to map here today. Uh, now, when I get started, um, I've got a number of different things that are available to me. Now, you can see in the upper left-hand corner, I've got no features because I really haven't created any yet. I've just got started. Um, I've got my canvas here. I've got some options uh, in ter terms of once the data set is created, how do I search it? The different background styles. I am going to pick a different background style um, as, I, as I get going. Um, history. History is really cool because essentially I can see a log of all of the changes that I've made so far while building. Now, one way to create, create a custom map is I could zoom in. I know where it's going to be. I could start to draw shapes, draw polygons, um, put points on there. But what I want to do is um, search for a couple of things. So let's get started. I will search for Statue of Liberty. And it'll find it. And for those of you who are familiar with the Statue of Liberty, um, or have been there before, you can see this dotted line that goes around the perimeter of uh, Liberty Island. Everything to the inside of the perimeter is owned by New York. Everything to the outside of the perimeter is owned by New Jersey. One little fact. You can also search uh, by zip code. I can also so the, the origination process of getting started with a map um, can be a bit simpler than just hunting and pecking for certain landmarks or certain things that I want to get started with. Um, I can also overseas. Any road studios. Famous cross -meet. Maybe I want to make a map of this. Maybe I want to combine this map with something else that I've already that I've already built. I'm in the same general geo area. Um, if I'm planning for an event, um, if there are certain things going on in the UK, I want to know where landmarks are. Um, I know I'm going to have visitors. I know that I'm going to have tourists, but I've got to keep people safe. I've got to reroute traffic. I've got to make sure I've just got enough capacity um, in order to accommodate all of the citizens who are going to be. Let's get one. Now, this map background type is fine. It gives me a general idea of where things are, a general outline, a general shape. But I'm going to change this to satellite stream. It does give me a bit more detail on where things are. And I actually kind of like. Um, again, you can see zero features. I need to change or edit the name of this uh, data set. Again, we're in the data set mode we're creating. We have not yet made anything available to Cognos Analytics. Uh, we're still really in the artist phase or in the drawing phase. So let's start out. I'm going to draw a couple of points. And let's start out with, let's say, the gates. I'm just going to drop this point here where I know there's a gate and add a property. And again, property is really important because the property names will be the column headings that I'm going to define in the layers of the map within Cognos Analytics. Um, and it's also going to be what I'm going to line up with the data that I want to populate um, in these various properties. This one will be gate. We'll call this Mills Fleet Farm. I'll confirm that. Let's put another gate out there. Uh, 
This one will also be gate. I can reuse those properties. And we'll add one more gate. All right. Now I've got three points. I can zoom in, not really gonna tell me a lot, but they'll be important because what I'm gonna need to do is reference these um, in the data and in the map within Cognos Analytics. Um, now I can take these, I can change them, I can move them around. The properties will not change um, as I've defined them. They'll still be called uh, gate with a value of Mills Fleet Farm. Um, but if I decide to move it, put it, in, put it in the wrong place, I need to move over uh, because what I might be doing is rerouting uh, the, uh, the fans who are coming into the stadium into, let's say, an extended gate uh, in order to, uh, to separate traffic to allow for distancing a bit, uh, again, to keep people safe. Um, you'll also notice, so now I've got uh, three features because I've got three gates. If you watch up here, in the latitude and long longitude section, um, as I highlight over various uh, sections in the map, it's um, uh, over here in the latitude and longitude section. Um, as I move around in the parking lot, it gives me a very hyper local or has hyper local sensitivity in terms of just being able see very specific spots in the place that I'm going to be mapping, uh, which is really, which is really cool, really important, um, because it gives me the level of detail that I just might need in order to create the, the objects and the things that I'm going to be looking for. Um, Marie, I'm, I'm going to ask if you'll uh, please help me monitor the chat um, while I'm sharing, uh, at least on this screen. Uh, uh, sure. And there's just a comment, which I don't know that there's much you can do about it. Um, every so often, your voice kind of cuts out and then comes back. Oh, okay. Well, hopefully, you didn't miss too much. No, I. I mean, I think it's okay for right now. Okay, we've got three features. We've got three gates. We've called them such. We've got value. I need to change the values for those or I need to delete those, I of course can do that. But let's create, let's zoom in a little bit. I'm gonna create a line. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna outline a section of the seating area here at Lambeau Field. Because this, as I think about um, as a part of the property management, about where I want people to be seated um, and subsequently want to be keeping them safe. I'm going to need to, I may need to keep some sections open and some sections closed. I may not want to open up the entire stadium all at one time. Um, I may need to keep certain sections or subsections either odd or even or every other. Um, within those subsections, um, I may need to keep those in mind as I want to um, ensure that I can bring fans in uh, to watch the game. But at the same time, again, I'm keeping it. Add this property, call it seating. In this section, I'm going to call 100 to 110. It may so happen that I might want to change or reshape uh, this particular polygon, and I can move it in totality. So maybe I want to slide it over. If we decide that um, one of the end sections we're going to leave open, or if I decide that um, I want to uh, move some of the uh, initial sections of where I've placed these endpoints, because I either want to make it smaller or I just want to reroute things a bit as things as my as my opening plan changes as the um, as the season progresses on 
and more and more fans uh, want to go to games as we open it up. Um, I'm just going to need to be able to adjust and um, ebb and flow a bit uh, in terms of what I'm creating here um, in order to keep people safe. All right, let's create one more line. All right, we'll add this property. This will also be seating. Call this 130 to 139. And we'll confirm. I'm gonna add one more. And instead of using the line or instead of using the point, I'm gonna draw a polygon. And let's create something in our seating section. And you'll notice that when I use this feature, uh, it looks a little bit different while I'm creating uh, the area. And honestly, this is the drawing feature that I tend to like the most because it just quite honestly goes the fastest. I don't think it has the greatest level of precision, but for what I'm gonna do here, that's perfectly okay. This would be seating also. I've already got 100 through 110, 130 through 139. So let's call this 112 through 128. And I'm also gonna use this polygon to create a parking. We'll just call this guy lot A. Confirm it. All right, now let's close this. I've added seven features. I've modified none. I've deleted one. Let's go to quick save. Now, over time, I may have a drawing like this or a data set that maybe it may have thousands and thousands and thousands of features. I may not know off the top of my head where those are. I may want to search the data. I can do that here. I've got three areas that I've defined in seating. I've got eight. And I've also got one feature. So I can Hey, Jason. Yeah, go ahead. You were cutting out really bad there. <laughs> oh, sorry. Now you're now you're good. <laughs> All right. So for, if you didn't hear, um, what I can what I can do is just search the data set over time. Uh, sometimes these data sets get uh, very dense. They get sometimes can get complex. Um, and much in the same way you would search for something, um, in Google or in a file system, or maybe even search content in the content store, it generally is uh, quite helpful if you can just go right to that. Um, something really cool, history. It's got a list of everything that I've done from the time I started, created a point, moved the point, modified. Um, here's the area of the seating chart that we modified. I'm um, all the way to making a polygon, save it. And now we're good. All right, what I'm going to do now, um, Maria, are there any questions? No. All right, let's move on. I'm now going to take uh, this data set and I'm going to compile it into a tile set. And remember, the tile set is the, the compressed version of all of these features. And it's structured in a way that the Mapbox API within Cognos Analytics can now call it and it can be used um, accordingly uh, to create maps within a dashboard. And in a report, by the way, uh, the method by which you would call a custom map in a report or in a dashboard is exactly the same, uh, no different. If I decide to export this, I can export this 
um, into a data set, but let's create our tile set here. Here's my data set. I'm going to export this to a tile set. I did not create a whole ton of features in here because as I create more and more objects, more and more features, et cetera, um, it does take a bit longer and longer and longer for the tile set to compile. And for the purposes of this demo, I just wanted to keep things easy, and keep things moving, but let's export this to a new, new tile set. Uh, this will take just a minute. And it's creating a tile set, what's called a tile set ID. I'm going to use that inside Cognos Analytics along with a couple of the other properties that the tile set uh, creates um, in different layers of the uh, geo map that's in uh, the dashboard. All right, let's have a look at what got created. Look at our title town tile set, the first thing I need to do is I need to make this public. Right now, it's just private to me. Only I can see it. Um, and I need to make this public so that it's accessible with Cognos, uh, from Cognos Analytics. If it's private, um, I can't see it within Cognos Analytics. Now, once it's public, if I create a map, pull it into a dashboard, pull it into a report, and I share that report or that dashboard with a friend, a colleague, a coworker, um, they can see it freely. There are no restrictions to seeing that. Um, I also need to, to stress that as Cognos makes calls to, um, to Mapbox using the Mapbox API, that no, none of your customer or client data touches the internet. All it's going to be doing is looking for coordinates, for shapes, for polygons, for features, for latitude, longitude, um, as it makes that call to the internet and then pull those, pulls those down and aligns them to the map, none of your customer data, none of your personal private data makes it to the, the internet. It never goes out, never. We've made this public. Let's have a look at uh, the properties of this tile set. I'm gonna need this tile set ID. I'll copy that. And you can see the layer details. I need title underscore town. And here are the columns that I'll reference in the data set that I uploaded. It's just an Excel file and a data set that I uploaded. And also data set looks like. Um, and I've done a couple of these demos before. Um, I did a demonstration um, a couple of years ago for the North Texas user group where um, I drew a map of DFW and integrated some forecasting capabilities in terms of where to put uh, where to put uh, foot traffic from when, with inside the airport, um, how gates are managed based on uh, the construction that happens at DFW, which is all the time. Um, given that some passengers may have families, some may have families with little kids. And I created that map and this map of Lambeau Field. Um, I probably created this in about a half hour, um, all told. Uh, te and teaching myself how to use Mapbox Studio was, was fast. It's not difficult. Learning curve is flat. Um, and again, I created this map uh, pretty quickly. If I click on these, I've got parking lot C, B, got the various lots. Here are my gates, you'll see a bank, and then all of my various seating areas, Lambeau Leap South, North, box seats, press box, et cetera. So this is what a more complete data set would look like. Um, and when I exported this to a tile set, um, it did take a little bit longer, um, but since it's already created, we'll leave it in place. Okay, let's go back to the tile set that we just created called Title Town. Make sure that we've got the right tile set ID. 
and let's drag in a map. Okay. Now there are some, some important things that we, properties of the tile set that we need to bring over into uh, the properties of the map so that when the API call is made, uh, that there's alignment. So let's go to properties of the map, regions layer, tile set ID. Layer name, we're gonna need the layer name. And we'll grab title town and we'll put it in the layer name. And the property name, there are uh, two layers that are available in Cognos Analytics. And there are subsequently two layers from the tile set that I want to grab. Um, I think I'm going to grab uh, seating for sure. I'll just copy and paste those in. Now you'll notice that nothing lit up on the map yet. So all I've done is connected the map using the map API to Mapbox where that custom map. I haven't brought in any data, but to give you an idea of uh, data that I'm going to bring in and then mash up with the map, let's create a table and we can get an idea of what I'm working with. So we've got a date field, the week number, or the season, the week of the season. Fields are important, the values are important. We can see here the features. That we brought in and the values for those features, and then ultimately the future week. By week, by week number for each gate, the parking, the seating, we got all my sections, all of the parking lot areas, and subsequently the entry points where people will be coming into the stadium. So I'll keep this up just for a minute. Uh, Maria, are there any questions so far? Um, yeah, there was one question about um, training. I'm assuming it was in Mapbox because that's where you were when the question came in. Um, oh, okay. I know you said it's pretty easy to use, but are there, um, I don't know, online tutorials or things where we can, you know, access some training? Yeah, sure. Um, I don't know to what extent there's deep training, but what I found um, using Mapbox Studio is uh, the hints and the tips, like learn how to adjust zoom extent or learn about tile set, uh, something about tile sets. Um, what I found is the hints or features that I'm using in uh, Mapbox is actually quite rich. Let's see, what is it? A data set is an editable collection of geojson features. So if I click on a uh, data set, now I've got um, an index of all of the, of the terms that I might need to learn what they mean and, and then subsequently how to use them. Okay, thanks. There's one other question that came in. Yeah. Um, I think you had mentioned Mapbox is free or Mapbox Studio is free. Um, do you wanna just kind of touch on that? Uh, sure, it's free. <laughs> and what, when I say it's, I mean, when I say it's free- Are there any limitations? But to like size of files, how many files? Yeah, there, there actually are, that, that's a good question. So when I say it's free, if I wanna integrate Cognos Maps with Google Maps, um, I gotta pay for those. Um, or I met, um, integrate them in with Esri, I gotta pay, I gotta pay for each call uh, based on the service, however they price it. Every time I use Cognos Analytics with Mapbox, um, all of the calls to custom maps or even existing GeoJSON maps that I might download from a public site, all those calls are, are free. Setting up an account with Mapbox Studio is free. However, there are limitations. Um, I don't know uh, comprehensively what the limitations are, but some of the things that I've seen are the number of uploads that you get per month, I think is capped to about 20. And the size of each upload, I think also has a cap. And what I've what I found in using Mapbox Maps, especially when I um, if I download a GeoJSON file from, let's say the uh, the St. Louis Fed or from uh, Bureau of Labor Statistics, something like that, um, where they would use maps, 
um, depending on how rich or how detailed, how many layers those maps have, the size of those files that you'll download can get big pretty quickly. Um, but I suspect that um, um, that with the non the the free version of Mapbox Studio um, has some limitations. A subscription to Mapbox Studio probably relieves you of those of those limitations, but the integration with Cognos and Mapbox will always be free. Um, so it just means if you get a if you're going to do map development, you either get a light version of the tool or a full fully baked version of the tool. Thank you. Layer. And that layer is a property that's going to be key for the, um, for the total kind of layer. We're going to go in layer two. It's going to use the same tile subtypes as I'm referencing the same. I don't have to. I can use, um, if I have maps that I want to layer on top of each other. So, for example, I may want to take a, a, a geographical based map that has weather and lay that on top of, uh, that's got all the features and the points and, and so on and so forth. And I may wanna lay that on top of uh, a, another map that I create, let's say if it's a stadium or a park, central park, something like that. Um, I, I, I'm not limited or constrained to have each one of the layers in Cognos Analytics uh, reference the exact same tile set. I can have essentially um, have reference in two sources. And the layer name is going to be the same. The property will just go in. Title town, city, and town date. I'm not going to do around with the legends at all, at least not at this point. Here's my winter layer and my summer layer. And I'm not Jason, we can hear you. Um, is, this, is this any better? Yes. All right. Um, I'm not going to touch the lat long layer. I'm just going to add data into the data slots for uh, the region layer and the point layer. For the region layer, I know that I've got um, that seating. So let's grab values. That's going to be the location. And let's grab patrons, see if I'm doing this the right way. Let's zoom in here a bit. Okay, good. Now I can see the map has already illuminated the areas that I've identified as a part of the region layer that I mapped to seating on this custom map. Satellite streets. Okay, much better. And if I highlight this, section 112 through 128 for all weeks is about 155,000. Uh, that's a lot of people. But I also know that I'm planning this week by week by week. Let's now bring in the value for my patron. I'll bring in value also. And again, patrons. Um, one thing that I did notice with uh, custom maps is the, uh, the ability to uh, either search the map or to really have deep controls over Zoom, I think um, tends to be a bit limited with the free version of Mapbox Studio that I'm using. I think there are some properties and controls in the map that will allow me to uh, to more closely manage that and control that. Um, but at least initially what I'm seeing is um, when I do click on some of these other other data items, 
from the list in appendix out quite a bit. Uh, but let's add the fourth color. See that zoomed out a little bit. But now I can see, let's go to week eight. That will filter the map. We're working on this same data set. And this happens to be section 130 to 139. We've got none, none here. We have any here. We've got 1,284 in section 100 through 110. So in the first week, um, we're, we're starting to bring patrons into the stadium. We want to do this in a very measured way. We want to keep people safe, um, but at the same time, let them root for the winning team. As I traverse down each week, I have uh, the ability to see what I'll end up seeing is the changes in the data. So let's go to week 12, which happens to be 1229. And let's see, now in section 130 to 139, I've got 500. And I've got 12,000 now in 112 through uh, 121. Let's just see if I can match them up correctly. 112 through 128 and 111 through 1,000. Now I've got zero patrons here, and I think we had some in the prior weeks, but what I've decided to do as a property manager is I've decided to shift those ticket holders uh, to a different location uh, because as I need to take additional precautions, um, I may want to put, even though I had patrons, let's say um, a, a dense concentration of patrons in one area of the stadium, I may want to move them uh, for um, another, uh, uh, for a subsequent week. Um, and especially with uh, season ticket holders, that does get a bit tricky because people may be expecting to sit um, in seats that they've rightfully purchased, um, but I've got an obligation to keep them safe. So I need to, if I need to move them up or move them down or over sections, um, so long as they're still in the ticket price range they paid for, uh, then I've, um, I've got the liberty to do that. Okay, um, on the next tab, I've got something that I'm calling a finished view. Let's maximize this. And this is, I think, more akin to what a traditional dashboard would look like. I've got week 11, 11, 11, 15 to 11, 29, all the way through 124, which is uh, the NFC Championship game, which inevitably will be held in Green Bay. I think we all know that. I'm counting on that. Uh, but I can, let's just take a look. Um, uh, what the patrons what they look like in terms of uh, where they're seated. So one, 111 to 127 has 2,500. We've got a few people here uh, toward the north end zone. South end zone has none because we're not ready for those folks yet. And on the west side, we also have none. Now this starts to fill in a, fill in a bit. I've got about 15,000 here. South end zone, I've got about 3,700 and 3,000 in the north, uh, on the north side of the, um, of the stadium. And the east side still continues uh, to fill out also. Uh, Marie, are there any questions in the, in the chat? Uh, no questions, but there is a comment. Go, Pat, go. Oh, yes, thank you. By the time we get to the NFC Championship game, we've so packed the stadium. We've got about 45,000 here, 38,000 on the west side. You can see this uh, this area here. Um, we've just had to move some of the visiting team into the parking lot in order to allow all of the Packer fans, tailgaters included, but it says the possibility, it, um, oftentimes um, when you have large crowds that might surpass uh, the capacity of a facility. Um, a couple of years ago when the, um, when the Saints infamously lost the NFC Championship game with that 
blown call right at uh, toward the end of the game. Um, I was actually coming into New Orleans at that time for a business trip, and they had, as a part of the viewing experience for fans, they had the stadium was packed. Uh, the, I think it's a Superdome was packed, but they also had large viewing screens like in the parking lot. And that allowed fans to get as close as they could to the stadium and the experience. So moving these fans um, to a part of the property that's not inside, but is still uh, close proximity um, is an option for us now because we've got the ability to, uh, to map parts of the property uh, to allow for fans to have that experience. And again, can't stress it enough, keeping people safe. Now, what I'll also do here is I'm going to turn on forecasting. And what I really would like to see is in the future, um, I've got fan, part uh, fan attendance week by week. Um, I've got the projection that fan earlier part of the season or the season was extended. Um, I've got the ability to forecast. Um, at some point, I'm hoping that part of this, these projected numbers that uh, the dashboard can forecast or project out um, can also be brought into these maps. But so far, um, what I've seen is the map will only bring in observed values and um, not forecast or projected values. Uh, but stay tuned. I think that would be a pretty cool feature. Now, 